Okay, so this video actually is motivated primarily by two things. One is in the previous video I made the, we made these awesome steampunk speakers for a computer. And the other thing is Luke is doing this fantastic job on a steampunk computer of his own. So, of course, I was just green with envy and now I've got these speakers. What I thought is I'd do my own steampunk computer. Now, Luke actually is a bit of a computer whiz. What that guy doesn't know about computers isn't worth knowing. Me, I'm a complete novice. I've got basically no idea. So what I've decided to do is to take an existing system that I've got, and this one is going to be very similar to a system you've got at home. It's not super powerful. It's not uh, all singing, all dancing. It's your baseline system that you sign onto the internet with. You do some emails. You do some spreadsheets. You see millions of these. Either you've got a bit old and then acting as a doorstop, or you're just using them. And I thought what I'd do is I'd take this system and I'd steampunk it so that it was a follow along and if you wanted to do it, you could do it too. Now we're going to completely go to town on it, okay? So the first thing to do actually is open up the case and get, have a look at the bits. These cases are always the same. There's a few screws on the back, one of the sides will remove and you can see the insides. Now we want to get all of those bits out of there. So there's a board right there, there's the hard drive right there, there's a whole bunch of cables and the power supply. There's actually a DVD-ROM drive with this which we don't want. We want the board and its bits, the disc and the power supply and this front end connector. So you just take all of the bits out of the case, that's what we're going to do, and lay them out. They're only held on with screws. Just unscrew okay, that took all of 10 minutes to do. There's the case stripped of its parts. When you look inside, actually, there aren't that many parts and certainly not many we need. There's a DVD drive. We're not going to use that, so we can chuck that away. This bit is the power supply, so we definitely need that. Now, it's a up Packard, so it was nicely made up. That bit we need. The other bit is the hard drive. That's got all your operating system on and all of your previous files. So that bit you also need, and you need to take a bit of care of it. I mean, by say a bit of care, don't leave out in the rain, don't let the dog chew it, that kind of bit of care, okay? So that bit we also need. And then the final bit is this bit, and this comes out as one whole piece. It's got about six screws in it. Just undo the screws, lift that out, and that is your motherboard. Now, resist the temptation to expose this to huge amounts of static. So if you're wearing a nylon jumper and you're stroking the cat and you do what I'm doing, it's probably not a good idea. You, people do ground themselves. It's not something you really have to worry about, but it's not something to um, be a, too easy about either. If you've got nylon carpets, for instance, and you're walking around in uh, bare socks, you touch it, you will give it a bit of a shock. So uh, try to lay it on something that's non-conductive. That just means a bit of cardboard, okay? So here's a bit of cardboard, just stick it on there and just leave it well alone. You're not going to do that much with it actually. All you're doing is transferring that into a case. So there's not a lot to do with that. Just leave it to one side once you've taken it out. Don't unplug anything so you don't have to remember where to plug it into. Now to get this out, which was the front port. Now you need this bit because we're going to put in an enclosure. Mostly you communicate with the computer and these bits at the back. And those bits at the back, you very often have to cut a hole in the case floor and that has to be lined up. That's not our plan. We're going to do something slightly different so this board can go anywhere. But we still need to get bits into the computer. Things like speakers, a microphone, a USB ports, a micro SD port, that kind of thing. Now, on the computer I had, it had this block on the front. All I did was remove the block and are keeping that block because I can plug that back into the motherboard and put that anywhere I want so it's convenient for me because it's got these cables so it can go anywhere I want. Now I took a photograph of where this plugged in and I held my finger at the red marking on this wire so I know where they go back and I know which way around they go back. So those four parts are the only parts you need. The rest of it Get rid of it. Okay, so to make this thing, what we're going to be using is this stuff. Now, I call it uh, Builder's Board. It's actually a uh, UPVC foam core roofline plastic. In the UK, you can get it everywhere. I believe the American version is called Sintra Board, but it's awesome stuff. Dead easy to cut with tools from a carpet knife, uh, a hand saw, machine tools. Really easy to cut. Comes nice and square, so it's easy to get squares from it, and it glues with super glue like you wouldn't believe. When you put a bit of super glue in there, the bond is actually stronger than the plastic. So I've always found this awesome stuff to work with, and we're going to build the box out of this stuff. Now it's going to be made out of a frame, basically. So the first thing to do is to get a frame made up. So to make the frame, we cut four pieces of the length that we want, 
put a, uh, a 45 degree angle on the end, put a bit of glue, squeeze them together and I make these little triangles to go in the centre there that keeps everything square. So a bit of glue on the edge there. Line them up. Squeeze them together. And then we put this section on a bit of super glue. And that squares everything up into the centre, squeeze them together. We need to make two frames. When you made the frames, they're basically going to be the box that the computer sits in. So it's kind of hard to give guidance on, on what to do because the rest of it, you basically build up so it looks right to you. Now what I want is kind of a footing of something that looks like cast iron. So I'm going for something quite solid here and I quite like that idea. So this bit here is just to build up that footing. So what we're going to do is take a couple of boards and make a floor out of them like that. That goes on there. Then the next couple of boards go on there. Then that goes on there because we're effectively building up a solid plinth. Now I've got a load of these little circles that I could either build this board with a hole saw and those circles will actually go on there and underneath and on top to make it look solid because what I'm going to do is put copper pipe in here and the copper pipe is going to come up like a framework building up this idea of a really solid cast iron foot and that's what I'm after. Now that is okay for me because that's the way I've designed this thing but like I say guidance for you it's very much to do with what you think looks pretty so it's very hard to give that guidance. All I'm going to do like I say at this stage here is glue all of these things down so that I can build that shape up leaving me the actual computer bit to pop into the end center box. So just line those up and put some super glue on. So once it's dry, it actually dries to this kind of flat and grey colour. And this is the bit that I think is kind of magical, actually. You just take a cloth and you give it a buff over that. And it goes from flat grey to a really sort of silvery grey colour. The same kind of colour as cast iron. So all I have to do now is buff this whole thing so that it comes up this nice shiny metallic colour. That's just lovely, actually. Okay, so that's the box all painted and polished, and obviously I put a couple of twiddly bits on it. I found a bit for a motor that I, I screwed onto the fan. I put something on there that just doesn't do anything, but I think looks pretty, and arranged a few bits from the actual computer, which is the on-off switch and a couple of LEDs, and glued this little handle on that does jack. I do think about making that the on-off switch, but to be honest, the wiring was a bit troublesome, so I didn't bother. Now, a lot of this stuff actually is just what looks pretty to you, and, and I'm going for a certain style of steampunk, and it looks pretty to me. So, what we've essentially done is made a big old box and screwed a few bits from the front of the computer to the side of the box, that's all. Now, the main computer itself, of course, still needs fixing in there, and if we fixed it in there, then we're probably going to have a bit of a problem accessing it. So, what I did was this. Just made a lid for it, and bolted the computer onto the lid. So it's upside down. But I've taken no parts off this at all and everything is clipped back in apart from this one where I had to put for an extension of four wires. Now just out of choice, because I think it looks cute, I put the power supply on the top here and led the power supply cables through that bit of flexible hose. It's a bit of vacuum cleaner hose, okay? I just put that in there. So that's all you need to do is basically screwing the bits back together. Now, there's a few other little twiddly bits I want to put on there to make it look pretty, but again, they're just to do with what you want, really. Uh, and you make design decisions about that, about what looks good to you. One thing we want is a mouse. Now, I'm a fan of trackballs, and this is kind of a Logitech trackball that I think will look really cute as part of it, and the plan is to put it onto that top, run that wire in a hidden way so you don't see it, and then we'll use a trackball instead of the mouse. But of course, like that, well, it's not that great. So I took it to pieces, which is easy, five screws underneath, pressed out the switches, which are right there, spread one copper, one gold, and all you have to do is clip them all back into place and screw it back together again. So once they're clipped back in place, we get that, and we can just pop it back on. And I've made a slight alteration to the um, cable here, so the cable tucks neatly under, because I'm going to drill through the case and basically just fix that to the case. So I can screw that back together now. 
Okay, so that's getting pretty close to being finished actually as the PC unit and to be honest I'm kind of pleased with it. Now you could obviously do this in anything you wanted. I've chosen this colour because I like this colour but you could make it out of mahogany or you could dye mahogany or you could grain it or do something like that where you just make the box out of something different because that's all it is. It's just a box with the computer inside and then some design decisions that you want to make. Now I don't know if you remember the speakers that we made from video 972 which is these ones here but of course these are going to go on my steampunk um, computer and that's all I'm really going to do next is fix that and fasten it all down. Now I've put this in because I am considering hanging a, video, um, a flat screen right here but I'm going to mull that one over a little bit I think. I might have a separate VDU, I might hang the VDU on. But more or less we've just got that left to do now and which is what I'm going to do next and like I said that's just fix them on the top there. That 972 uh, this was a suggestion actually and I thought it was an awesome suggestion to number the videos so when I refer to them then I'll just refer to them by the number and you can look up video number 972 if you want to make those speakers. Anyway let's get those speakers fitted. Okay so that is the <laughs> PC finished with all its little twiddly bits. I kind of like that hey. It's very much to my style obviously your style is going to be different. Now it's going to be an all-in-one so the only thing missing is the keyboard and screen. Now the keyboard, the USB keyboard goes straight in there. I am contemplating steampunking a keyboard, of course. The other thought was a wireless keyboard where I'd put a wireless receiver in the USB port and then have a wireless keyboard. And obviously it needs the screen and I am thinking again about steampunking up a screen but they're going to be separate videos because they're quite involved in themselves. But that's the PC finished. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video and thank you very much for watching.